Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here. Today is going to be my worst books of 2019. This one is not in any order, unlike my best books of 2019, which I'll link down below for you. Um, but I have 10 books that I did not like, and yeah, let's get started. Also, different background. Let me know what you think about this. Um, I just didn't want to sit on the floor because my back is really sore today, so yeah, we're here. Also, I have a really croaky voice right now because I'm not feeling the best. But that's okay. We'll just see how it goes, right? So, let's start with the books that I really did not like in 2019. So, the first book that I am mentioning on this list is Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. This will probably come as no surprise. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it. I've definitely mentioned it a few times um, on my channel, but basically I really enjoy Rainbow Rowell's um, like YA books. Um, I've read now two of her adult novels and I've really not enjoyed either of them. The first one being Landline, which I really didn't like. Um, but Attachments I read in 2019 and I buddy read this one with Nicole, which was a great experience. I still love buddy reading, even though I, when I don't like the book. Um, and I just love buddy reading with Nicole because I think she's amazing. But I really was not a fan of this book. This book follows a man named Lincoln who works as a kind of digital suit as a digital security officer for a newspaper so basically he monitors um, emails and online things for this particular newspaper and one of his roles is to read the emails that go back and forward um, and check them for any kind of flagged content so he has um he keeps getting this um these two women's conversation being flagged up for inappropriate content and whatever and he decides to um he starts to be interest, interested in their conversation and rather than deleting it or sending them warnings he basically um, starts to read along and he falls in love with one of the girls and then he meets her in real life and honestly this book was mildly offensive, more than mildly offensive, it was incredibly offensive, there was a lot of kind of fat phobic, um, there was lots of um, conversations against mental health issues, I just found the whole thing really just like, it made me feel really uncomfortable and I, yeah, I just wasn't a fan at all, I really did not like it. I also found that um, none of the characters were likeable, none of them were particularly interesting, I didn't really care what any of them had to say and I just, yeah, this was not for me, I was really disappointed in this because I love Rainbow Row, like I said, and I was really hoping that Landline was just the blip that I didn't like, but unfortunately, it seems like her adult books are just not for me. The second book on this list is one that I'm very upset... <laughs> I'm quite disappointed in again. This is Farewell to the East End by Jennifer Worth, which is the third book, I think, in the Call the Midwife series. Now, I will say one thing is that I did not read this series in order, so I have not read the previous books in the series. Again, this one was a buddy read. I buddy read this one with Emily from Novel Novels, and I will also say that I do intend on reading the earlier books in the series. But the reason why this is on my kind of worst books of the year was because this book purports to be about midwifery. That's kind of the point of the series. It's all about midwifery in the time period um, of the 1950s, 1920s, 1950s. I'm pretty sure it's the 50s. Anyway, either way. Um, and it talks a lot about kind of... Um, there, but there wasn't that much midwifery in this particular book. It talks a lot about kind of um, dealing with tuberculosis and dealing with um, poverty and lots and lots of hard hitting topics, which was really difficult to read. Um, and I think I probably would have enjoyed it more had I have gone into it knowing what I was expecting. But because it's part of the Call the Midwife series, I was hoping there'd be more midwifery in it. That was kind of what I was expecting and I was kind of let down by that. So although I do want to read the first two books which I own um, in the series, I do still think that this one was just not a good book. Next up is a book that I really did not like and I'm really really upset and I'm very sorry guys because I made a lot of people read this because... so. In September of this year, was it September or was it August? I think it was September. Um, I um, created the Scooby Doo Athon, which, by the way, was one of my favourite things of this year. However, um, along with my co hosts, Clint and Emily, we decided to um, that our group book was going to be Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantaro, which was a book that is um, essentially, it's essentially Scooby Doo gender flipped, but without. Um, calling themselves Scooby-Doo and all the character names because copyright. Um, 
this particular book was just bad <laughs> this book was just bad um this is supposed to be it was supposed to be a horror book with a bit of i don't even know um it just wasn't good it basically follows um the um this group so this kind of scooby-doo gang but not obviously um it follows them um sort of 15 years i think it was after this case that they solved when they were children um and this case has kind of stayed with them all none of them are particularly successful in their fields um they've all kind of been haunted by this particular thing one of the members um is now dead uh, the kind of Fred character um, and it's them kind of going back to the town where this all happened and it's them kind of trying to figure out this particular case and I don't even really know how to explain it it was just it it just wasn't good the writing was pretty terrible um, I feel like this is probably on a few people's bad like worst books of the year and I'm really sorry I made you read it um, yeah it wasn't good and i was really upset because it had such like it was so, such a good link between the scooby doo -a -thon and the group book there was such a good link and it was just a shame it wasn't good um and for that reason i have to put it as like probably my least favorite book of the year because it just was so upsetting <laughs> that i had essentially picked a book that i was really excited about and it just fell so flat Next up is a classic, and there's actually a couple of these on this list this year. Um, and for me, this year, um, I've enjoyed reading classics. Um, I've read a few duds, though, and the first of that is a very popular one, and that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I feel like this is quite a polarising book. I've seen a lot of people love it and some people hate it. I am, unfortunately, of the camp that I hated it. Um, I didn't really understand it. To, like I understood it obviously what the point of the book is it basically follows a man named Dorian Gray who has a picture done like a portrait done of himself and then he starts to fall in love with the painting and then everything bad that he does the painting changes um and I liked the principle the story the kind of morals behind the story is great um I just I didn't like the execution I don't know if I'm just not a fan of Oscar Wilde's writing or what it is um yeah i just i really didn't couldn't get behind this one um i found that all the cat i mean i know the character's not meant to be particularly likable but there's just something about him that just grated on me and i found the writing style was just really bad i didn't enjoy the the kind of l like linguistic style i guess i just um yeah i didn't like this book at all unfortunately and also for such a short book it did take me ages to read <laughs> because i just wasn't wasn't there for it uh, next up is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I read this for one of my TBRs from 2019 and um, unfortunately I really didn't like this one. I had really high hopes for this one because it had all of the kind of tick boxes that I generally give to books. Um, I It had the kind of um, post-apocalyptic dystopian world which I really love. It had the kind of virus thing which is like one of my favourite things to read about. It's really creepy but I love reading about kind of the world getting a virus and and kind of what happens and how people deal with it and i was really hoping for this to be that but it's that's not really what this book is so basically this follows a world where um a man named arthur is in a play at the very start he's a um well-known actor and he's in a um kind of um theater show um of king lear and um he dies of a heart attack on stage and then that evening there's a virus that basically wipes out sort of 99 96% of the world and it then takes place like four years later is it four years later I think it's a number of years later anyway it's probably more than four I think it's like 10 years later I don't know I can't remember timelines it's a number of years later and it's kind of following all of the people who um survived and kind of what's happened how they've rebuilt communities or what things they've decided to keep and what things have been changed and different bits and pieces um just it didn't work for me the i think the book was meant to be kind of a moral 
literary kind of novel rather than it being like a fun dystopian novel which is kind of what I was hoping for so it didn't have quite what I was expecting and yeah it just wasn't wasn't very successful to me I really I just I mean I finished it but I was hoping for something completely different. Next up we have a thriller and I'm really sad to be putting this on this list but I really I didn't like it at all it was one of my least favorite books of the year so I can't really um beat around the bush and not talk about it but this is The Accident by C.L. Taylor. Now I will just say that I love C.L. Taylor in general. I've read two of her other books and gave them like four and five stars. Absolutely loved them. I've got some more of her books to read and I'm really excited about it so this is in no way a reflection on the other books of hers I've read. I think the main reason why I didn't like The Accident is because it has a massive trope in it that I really don't like so this is it wasn't a book that I enjoyed. This basically follows a woman whose daughter um, is in a coma because she walked in front of a bus and now she's trying to figure out what happened to her daughter and why she did this. Um, she It also has like, it has dual timelines, so it has this timeline um, of her with her daughter now trying to figure out what's going on. But it also goes back to something that happened to her when she was much younger where basically she was in a very abusive relationship and um she managed you know she's managed to get away but you kind of see the similarities all the things that have stayed with her and my biggest pet peeve and my biggest the biggest trope that i really hate in books and i've talked about this a lot is um when a, when anybody a character is not believed because of a mental health issue or because they've previously had a mental health issue and so people dismiss them going forward um and so i just this book really really like it was so like i think it's just a bit like it grabbed like oh i don't even know how to say it because it just it upset me so much because i literally hate this trope now i think that there are probably a lot of people out there who will enjoy this because i love cl taylor's writing um and i am a massive massive fan of her writing and i think that you will definitely enjoy this book if that's not a thriller that if that's not a trope that upsets you or you have any problems with um I just I really have a problem with this trope and so because it was about that it just really wasn't for me. <laughs> Next up we have a contemporary novel this one is called um, Sleeping Arrangements and it's by Madeline Wickham. I read this in uh, December actually so you'll probably hear my thoughts more in my December wrap up which I believe will be coming up in a couple of videos time but this one is um, basically Sophie Kinsella who wrote the Shopaholic series which I love it's um, her writing under her act her real name so her name is Madeline Wickham she writes under Sophie Kinsella as a pen name and um, it is very much warned at the beginning of the uh, book there's like a note from the author and it does say that this is completely different than the writing style is very different and um, um, yes, so basically Sophie Kinsella, the things I love about Sophie Kinsella's writing is that she's very, um, there's the humour to it and it's very kind of like, like kind of light contemporary I guess. This particular book I enjoyed to start with and then it started to go downhill for me and it ended terribly. <laughs> So um, this basically follows um, two families who have both had, so one family um, is a woman and her husband and their two boys and basically um, her husband is struggling with um, the fact that his uh, account, his bank bank has just been taken he works in a bank and his bank has just been taken over by another firm and he's unsure whether or not he's going to keep his job um and then you have the um and then you have this woman who obviously is trying to they're going on holiday they've been let this um villa by one this woman's friend and they want to enjoy the holiday they want to not he she wants him not to think about the fact that this is happening and just to take some time out as a family basically and then you have the other side so then you have a man who um is going to this villa um with his wife and his their two daughters and the two daughters um they have a nanny that they've hired as well and they all go over there um unfortunately for them all it's actually the same uh villa and they've been double booked and it's about there's a pre-existing um like history between the two families and it's kind of about that now 
there's lots of things in this that I didn't enjoy. I enjoyed the beginning because I found getting to know the characters was really interesting. There was some there was some fleshed out characters, there were some characters that I didn't like, and there were some characters I loved, and I loved that that, that was the, that was the case, but it you really have there is just so much in this book that just would never ever happen and is completely unbelievable the at one point i'll give you an example at one point the nanny is smoking weed i believe and she um what the young boy of the other family one of the boys he's like 15 i think um or 15 or 16 and he um has a bit of a crush on her and at one point the nanny says to the families, um, they're sleeping outside in tents basically, and she says, I'm going over there and we're going to have sex, so just leave us alone. And they just all let it happen. And I, I didn't, couldn't compute, it doesn't make any sense, like that's not going to happen, that's not a thing that would happen in real life, so yeah, I just, I couldn't, this book was unbelievable, it was just bad and um yeah i found myself rolling my eyes throughout it rather than enjoying it unfortunately next up we have a book that again is kind of a classic i guess but um this is an, uh, a book by this author that i'm really upset about because i've not read much by this author and i have not enjoyed what i have read at the moment um this is evil under the sun by agatha christie which is i think the 10th it's quite far into the Poirot series and I love Poirot the TV show so I was really excited. I read this as part of the, um, I read this as part of Christie Fest which is hosted by Julie from Hungry Bookworm which I will link down below. Um, Julie does these quite regularly um, and it's read-alongs basically of different books by Agatha Christie. Now I really want to read more by Agatha Christie because I understand and I like her premises, I just really didn't like this particular book. I felt like it was a lot of um, telling rather than actually showing what was happening. There was a lot of people sitting around and discussing what was going on or what had happened without it actually happening. I didn't enjoy um, the story in this one. Um, this basically follows a rich woman um, who is known as a bit of a player and she's found dead on an island um, where Poirot is on holiday and it's kind of about that. I just I didn't like this book and I was really upset because a lot of people in the we did like a group chat for the Christie Fest and a lot of people really enjoyed it and it's one of their favourite Poirots and I just I did not enjoy it um, and I'm, I'm really upset about that but hopefully I'll, I have a couple of uh, Agatha Christie books on my shelf that I'd love to get to so um, if you have any suggestions for other Agatha Christie books um, I need to ask Leanne from Literary Diversions because she's like Agatha Christie fangirl um so I need to find out what I need where I should start should I start from the beginning or should I try Miss Marple hmm unsure but yeah let me know if you have any particular suggestions then the penultimate book is one that I read um in November and this is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy this is a massive 800 page book and it does not need to be that long and I was really I felt very accomplished having finished it however I really hated it <laughs> So I enjoyed the big, like to start off with the reading experience, um, it was interesting, I read it over quite a long period of time, I split it up quite a bit and um, this basically, I don't understand why it's called Anna Karenina because although Anna Karenina is obviously in the book, like a lot of it is about other people so I don't, like it's about the, the world that she inhabits but it's about lots of different people um there's lots of lots of different characters in this um which is not it's kind of you know it's not a chain game changer for me i have no real problems with that um what i don't like is that there were so many unlikable characters and then the ending the ending there is a massive massive thing that happens like 50 pages from the end and the last sort of 30 pages it doesn't even talk about what happened it literally glosses over it it moves on to the next thing the language there are, this book in kind of format reminds me a lot of Les Miserables by Victor Hugo which I really enjoyed when I read it however it has the same problem I think that all um, classic authors seem to have or at least these two particular authors have where they just go off on a tangent about nothing in particular. In, in Les Miserables, there was a whole section on sewers and it didn't make any sense to me. In this book, there's a whole section about farmers and about like farming. I don't even know. It was just, it was bad, you guys. And I just don't understand why everybody loves it so much. Oh, it's frustrating. <laughs> 
And then the last book is a book that I really hated as well, strangely enough. It's the worst books of the year. Uh, this is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. I have a love-hate relationship with Gillian Flynn. I really enjoyed Dark Places. I thought Gone Girl was okay. I really did not like Sharp Objects. And um, The Grown Up is probably my least favourite of all of her books. This, So this is a short story. Um which was also published in the Rogues Anthology, which George R. R. Martin did, which I read, I think, a couple of years ago. And I had actually, so I had read this story before, but um, never as a, just as its own in a book. And I think it might have been changed a little bit. Um, this basically follows a woman who is working as a fake clairvoyant. So she's pretending that she can um, kind of read, like, see ghosts and, um, you know, tell people what their loved ones are doing. And then she gets, um, she goes to this woman's house um, and things happen that she's not expecting. And yeah, I just, this writing was awful. I don't even understand how the person that wrote Dark Places can have written all those other books. Because I did enjoy Dark Places a lot. I think I gave it a five star actually. It was really, really good. And the two together, it doesn't even compete with me. I can't understand it. So yeah, I'm not a fan. I don't understand what's happening with the world. I don't get it. So, yes. I just, I don't understand. Um, yeah, I really hated that one as well. So there you are, guys. That is the 10 books that I really didn't like in 2019. They were my worst books. I'm sorry if they were some of your favourites, but... I'm going to be honest and tell you what I think. And most of these are not surprises to you, I'm sure, because I've definitely mentioned them before. Um, but yeah, let me know what your least favourite books of the year were. Um, I find it really funny when some pe when people say some of my favourite books is their least favourite. So let me know if you have any that are like that. And um, yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I shall see you next time for another video. Bye, guys. <laughs>